Hi, I'm Molly here at Mill City Museum, where we're highlighting women in Minneapolis labor history. Even as a teenager, Nellie Stone Johnson was recruiting her coworkers to unionize. She was the first black person to join the Minnesota Culinary Council, where she later became the first woman vice president. She was also active in the NAACP, the Civil Rights Congress, and won a seat on the library board, becoming the first black elected official in Minneapolis. Now let's hear what she has to say. I came to Minneapolis from Lakeview, Minnesota when I was 17. I came down with the idea of becoming a chemist or something. It was beginning to get into the heart of the depression and jobs weren't too easy to find and it kind of curtailed my going to school. However, I did go to the university quite a bit, but I didn't dabble in chemistry, I dabbled in politics and the whole economic end of things because I was getting interested in the labor movement. I was working at a club, a private club, and in fact, I had three different jobs there. I worked as a checkroom attendant, an elevator operator, and a receptionist. At the time that we helped to organize the hotel employees union, I was running a service elevator, and it made it very convenient for me because I come in contact with the employees and sort of built in memberships there. I always talked to them about labor and beginning the organization while we were going up the 14 floors. Employees were very much disgruntled about the wages, which as I remember at the time was about 12 and a half cents an hour. The people couldn't live very well on that. This particular institution was one of the better paying jobs to be had during the depression. They cut back. They said they had to cut back anyway. We got cut. And of course, then we started to think in terms of organization. Now people ask about discrimination in unions, division between black and white workers. There were always people in various locals that would attempt to do these kinds of things. But in the union movement at the time, you could not organize whites into a union and have blacks discriminated against to the point that they may be hired and brought in at lower wages and then break down everything that would come under the union contract. Now, this is not true of all unions, but we did happen to have this. There was a question among black workers that they don't want us, that a lot of blacks had bought the propaganda that the white labor person didn't want them. Of course, my position was I didn't care whether they wanted me or not. This was my natural niche. This is where I belonged if I'm going to do myself economically and politically any good. 